Okay, so I've been doing a pretty serious overhaul on this, most specifically the coolant system, because if you have been following along, I'm gonna go on a pretty substantial journey in two months when I'm losing my job. And also last summer, when I went on my week long road trip in this thing, coming up out of the Soyuz, 35 degrees of a big old hill, I did have, it got warm. I had the heating issues, so I wanna get ahead of it this year, take care of it, I'm gonna get a water pump, and do a bunch of other stuff, which I've already started. I've done a little bit of the groundwork that I thought was boring, so it's already done. So I will show you what I've done, and then we're gonna continue doing what we're doing. But first, we'll show you everything that's done so far. So first things first, I got my Transadapt uh, throttle body spacer. I will say I have no expectations that's going to give me a lot more power or anything like that and if i if it does like i'm not even gonna be able to tell but specifically what i wanted that for was to lift up the intake so hopefully when i put this all back together with the body lift from journeys off-road i think it should lift the intake so it sits nicer and it's just going to look better and fit better so i think that's going to be a big improvement there one well, second i've got all this stuff off and my transmission cooler is out and actually if you look here you can see how you can see how like clogged up my radiator was because I actually because I took off all this these are my AC parts I just took out all these lines this thing the condenser itself this thing is actually broken off and it never worked since I got it so I just Realize I'm never gonna install it fully, so take it all out, save some weight, and give it more flow. But yeah, in between, because it was on front, in between was just cake full of dirt and dust and stuff. So I think that itself will make an improvement in the flow. But over here, if I pop this cap off. I don't know how well you're gonna be see with the sun stuff. My radiator is like fairly rusty just looking through this hole and then there. So I think it might be kind of rusty throughout the whole inside of this thing. So that's basically why I am gonna replace the whole, the whole radiator. I think that'll be a very good thing. So I got a new radiator and in here, I got a new fan clutch. This is the old one. I got a new fan clutch, so I'm gonna fix that. I got a new water pump that goes behind. I got some new hoses. So I'm going to replace hoses, fan clutch, water pump. This would be a good time to replace a thermostat, but I actually did do a thermostat replacement when I first got this van. I could have, should have, would have done the water pump at the same time, but budgetary issues, I decided to sacrifice that. But anyway, so it does have a fairly new thermostat. I'm going to leave that in. So that's the big project of what I'm doing. But first, over here... I got these two lines here, which go down there. That is the oil cooler, which I'm going to remove. I, I guess I should say I do not recommend anybody remove their oil cooler. This is just something you see online, but from what I've understood is the 4.3 liters in the like S10s did not come with an oil cooler, but they did in these vans. But that these lines are pretty prone to cracking, splitting, whatever, and leaking. And actually, if you see mine, they are super dirty. Like maybe they've been sweating oil or something like that. But anyways, I was talking to my boss who is actually building a van like this. And he said he just deleted his oil cooler. So I was reading up online. And basically, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove it. Um... It should be okay, and at the end of the day, this thing has almost 300,000 K on it. If it isn't okay, it is what it is, but I'm gonna remove it. So that's the first step I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna remove these lines, and then go under there, and then remove the adapter. So that's that's first step, so let's go. So this actually pretty quickly became a necessity because one of the clips that hold these lines into the radiator was rusted solid and maybe with a little more patience i could have got it out but i just took some side cutters to these hoses and completely removed them 
Well, first step, we're taking the oil filter off. I think we'll be able to see more what's going on once that comes out. So, hopefully I don't spill it. I don't really want to change my oil fully, um, which I probably should, but I'm going to change it in the near future, so hopefully I can do it without. Okay, so filter is out. This is what we're looking at here. These are the lines coming in and out. I'm gonna undo that bolt, pull that aside, and then I have these two bolts. And then this unit's gonna come down. So, I don't know how much you're gonna see in here. Obviously it's a pretty tight spot, but that's, uh, that's what I'm looking at doing. So I think I'll leave a link to the write-up I used to do this in the description. And again, I do not recommend doing this. The GM engineers put it here for a reason. But personally, I am not concerned because the oil technology has greatly improved since 1998. So I'm just going to use good oil with proper heat dissipation from now on, and I can't foresee a problem. This is the housing. Hoses went in there. I'm going to slide this out. Oh, in my Allen key. That is where the oil filter is going to go, so that's going to go into the block. And I'm going to make sure the rest of that gasket is off. And that is now trash. Make sure the O-ring is off because you are going to have an O-ring on the, your oil filter itself. So put this piece up in there and go from there. Up in there. And this is going to go up in here. Okay, looks like that and make sure it's tight and reinstall the oil filter. I cut all these both to make it come out in two pieces but also because I couldn't get that one clip it was rusted shut. Anyways I'll add that into my pile of junk that I've cut off here. <laughs> cool anyways next I'm going to start pulling more stuff off here. I'm going to leave my transmission ones on for now, um, but I'm going to start, I'm going to take my fan off. So I got a fan clutch tool on Rock Auto. I recommended it. So I think it holds it still while I break the nut off, while I bust a nut. And uh, so I'm going to pull that fan off now. So this ended up being quite a pain. Maybe this wasn't the best tool, but at the end of the day, you just got to fiddle around hit the wrench with a hammer, pop that fan off, and spin, spin, spin that thing right off there. So this part is definitely pretty straightforward. It's four bolts that hold the fan onto the fan clutch. And this is definitely worth replacing. The fan clutch is often overlooked, but these can fail. And actually on my old 1995 Forerunner, I went on a road trip. It was like my maiden voyage after rebuilding the whole thing. And I came home and it was leaking fluid. And I'm like, what the heck's leaking fluid? And it turned out it was my fan clutch. And that was the first day that I learned that a fan could leak. So anyways, good thing to replace it. The one looks the same, but obviously better. This thing's probably the original. 1998 piece. At this point, I just kind of worked late into the evening, taking everything apart and getting it down to the bare bones so it was ready for me to work. And while I was in here, I did notice that my core support was in a lot worse shape than I would have thought and also that I would have liked. So I did do, I'll say some repair work, which is probably overstating. I hit it with a wire wheel, hit some rust converter on it, and that's all I want to talk about that. But we did get this engine down to a blank canvas. Okay, it is now tomorrow. 
and I really don't know exactly where I finished yesterday, but everything is out. I got my water pump out. I scraped away the gaskets. All my hoses are off and everything's sitting over here. This is my water pump, all my hoses, my shroud. This is new radiator. These are old parts. Already scavenged. I had a little adapter for my transmission cooler. So I scavenged that off here. Scavenged these little rubber mounts that used to go there. They're already on my new radiator. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put in the radiator right now. I'm gonna attach my transmission cooler. And I was sort of gonna start with my water pump, which is over here. AC Delco. But I was literally just online procrastinating doing this. And some guys recommended painting it. And judging how rusty that one is, I think it makes sense to paint it. So I'm gonna paint it tonight. I'm gonna rough fit in my radiator. And I'm gonna see if I can rig up a mount for my transmission cooler. Originally I held it in with like the zap straps that go through the, uh, actually I had it through my AC condenser. And I may or may not do that. I did buy new zap straps. But I did buy some metal that I think I might be able to rig up a proper mounting. So we'll see how it goes. But that's the plan for now. Drop in the new radiator. And uh, yeah, go from there. So this is just a straight up factory replacement radiator from Rock Auto. I purchased everything from this video from Rock Auto. And honestly, I highly recommend them. Even shipping to Canada is pretty decent. So like I said, I highly recommend them. I get almost all my parts, if not all my parts, from Rock Auto. And obviously that's not a sponsor. Radiator is in. I'm about to spray my water pump down. Got it all taped off. Engine enamel. This is just paint I had laying around. Basically, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> okay, so basically, these mounts here, that was originally where the AC condenser is attached to. So I bought these at Home Depot. I'm gonna go to the front here. And basically, my theory was To cut that down to size and I'm going to use that as a way to mount my transmission cooler so I'm going to grab out the grinder and uh, attach those and go from there okay so this is what we got cooking we got these two mounted across and my it's going to bolt onto here on the top then I rigged up a couple shorties for the bottom. So, and I got some bolts I got from the hardware store. So that's the plan. I'm going to mount this up here. Add my little shorty legs. And hopefully it'll be solid. I think this is going to be a better mounting than the way I had it. So, it looks semi-pro instead of being hack. <laughs> well, that's pretty hack. So I got this totally mounted in. It looks solid, so I quite like it. I did add a little bit of tape on here just to double check it doesn't rub. I do have, this is a vacuum tube, but just wanted to be extra safe. So I think I'm gonna put this whole grill back on and then I'll be done for the day. Let that dry overnight and then I'll be back tomorrow or the next day or whatever. 
to do do the rest of the work. Cool. Okay, so van is all buttoned up on the front and I'm going to be working on this today. So I got new hoses, new rad cap, and then this is the water pump. Water pump's going on right now. These are glued on. I just tacked them on with spray glue. So it should be pretty easy, bolt on. It's painted, painted it the other day. Yeah, so this is the final stretch. I would like to get most of it done tonight. At least get it running and be able to check my fluids. So that's sort of the plan. One more thing, I did wire wheel all these bolts. They were really rusty and ugly. So tidied them up all pretty. Clean the gasket surfaces, all that jazz. So should be a pretty simple bolt in, put the hoses in, belt back on, put the fan on, yada, yada, yada. Let's go. And to me, this is all the easy bit. Taking everything apart is hard. Putting it all back together is easy. First, the water pump goes in. Make sure all your bolts are tight. Then you put the pulley back on. Replace the fan belt. This would actually be a good time to like replace the fan belt or the serpentine belt. But this belt is actually pretty new because I did replace it when I did my original tune-up of the van. And in hindsight, I kind of wish I did all this in my original tune-up of the van. I think that would actually be wise for anybody that's looking to buy one of these vans is to plan on doing the radiator, the water pump, all the hoses, because these things are old. But it's kind of unrealistic. Like I bought a 1998 GMC Safari van partially because they're cheap, because I didn't have a lot of money. So we're doing it step by step. These hoses were a real pain in the butt, but you know, you just got to fiddle, take your time, eventually get it on there. So everything is now buttoned up, other than my rad cap. But I'm going to start her up, check for leaks, and then um, run it for a while, burp the air out of the system. But I will note how much better this intake fits with the throttle body spacer. That was like I said, the whole goal of it. It looks way nicer. It looks almost stock up here. Doesn't quite fit right on the mounts, but uh, close enough. So I think it just fits way better. So I'm I'm happy with that. Um, I'm happy with that already. So anyways, I'm gonna fire it up. Hopefully it starts, because this thing has not been fired up in quite a while. And then I'm gonna have to check for fluids. Anyways, hold on. Let's fire this thing up. I got plenty of oil pressure. It has plenty of oil pressure since I did take out my uh, filter, whatever, my oil cooler. I need to make sure I got oil pressure and I got solid oil pressure. I will have to check that level, but I changed my transmission fluid and filter. I think I did that off camera. Uh, before I started so I'm gonna run it through the gears once I warm it up and then check all my levels I'm probably not gonna test drive it tonight. So I'll have to do that tomorrow, but I'm gonna make sure my fluids are looking pretty damn close, but Let this thing run that I leaked out earlier as I was filling it. So I think I'm gonna be good, but I'm gonna run it up to 10. So after running it for a while, letting it cool down, getting all the air out of the system, you gotta refill it with 50-50 uh, pre-mixed coolant. Need more juice. And I got this sweet looking radiator cap. 
The other one was the original one was metal, but I think this one looks like more stock and I think it looks cool. Oh. I think we are tight. So here we go, we're headed off on our final test drive here. This is the third time I've been driven it. I'm just double checking the transmission fluid every time. They don't have a drain pan so or drain plug, so I don't want to overfill it. When I had dropped the pan to do my filter, that would have been a good time to add a plug, but I didn't really want to do that. So I just went as is, but that would have been a good idea to do. But everything, seems to be driving good again I can't feel any power increase or anything like that from the from the throttle body spacer which was basically what I was expecting uh, maybe it maybe it has one or two horsepower or one torque more but it feels the same it does drive quite nice so I think it the fluid might have been helpful in the transmission but the temperatures are basically exactly the same um but before like when i when my thinking when my van came up to temperature it would bump from like it would like get to temperature and then it would raise up a little bit before it went back down and operated normally so now it just goes right up to operating temperature and just stays there and i haven't done anything too crazy with it and it hasn't been that hot but uh, i think this will be an invaluable uh, upgrade for my trip in the summer because it will be hot then and I'll be uh, doing some intense driving so invaluable so as we finish up this test drive I just want to say I got one more mod plan but it's probably not gonna be on camera due to tight spaces but if I got the uh, Prothane motor mount bushings because these motor mounts are probably shot. They're uh, they're all bad on these vehicles and the aftermarket ones aren't good. So Prothane Urethane bushings are the way to go. So I'm gonna throw those in there off camera and I do have these journeys off-road plates so I can't grab them here of these journeys off-road plates that supposedly lift up the engine a little bit with the uh, motor mount things I don't exactly know if I need them or not, but I got it all. So I'll throw that in probably during the week after after work, stuff like that. Just chip away at it, because it should be, it is. It's gonna be a gnarly job. Uh, it's just gonna suck, so. Yeah, it's gonna suck, so just chip away at it. And that's, uh, that's that, that brings me up to date. And hopefully my van will be good to go for my whole of my, my trip. So that's it, the end of this episode. Peace.